Hey everybody, my name is Alexander Craig. I'm a songwriter and performer from the Midwest. I also direct and edit music videos. If you like what you hear, please check out my music on streaming sites and check out my videos on YouTube. Hope you all are having a good day. AlexanderCraig.com There he goes! Alexander yeah, Craig in the building! What's up, buddy? How you doing, dude? Doing good, doing well, doing fine. Excellent, excellent. Uh, first, for people that may not know you, sir, can you do me a favor and let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now? Uh, plug and promote anything that you'd like, and uh, we'll get started. Uh, so my name's Alex uh, Alexander Craig. Alex Larson is my proper name. Alexander Craig is my name and my middle name. Um, I am a singer, songwriter, and music video producer uh, from Anoka, Minnesota. That's where I'm at right now in my hometown. Are are you, I think I've asked you this before, but are you a Vikings fan? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess hometown pride type vibes, but I don't really follow sports in general. So, for sure, to fair be enough. To be honest. Dude, I, yeah. I appreciate I appreciate you being here. Thanks for for also uh, supporting us. We support you. We jam you every single day. Uh, we got a new single out from you recently. We jammed it earlier. It's it's called Time. Correct. Yeah, man. What did you think? I thought it was cool. It, I like how each track has like a different vibe. Like like motorcycle has kind of that rock and roll kind of feel, but it is totally catered to like bikers. Uh, hence the video. But then you have Picking Up Steam, which has like a little pinch of like a ska influence with the horns and stuff. And then Time is very bluesy. When you take me through the concept of, of today we're writing the song, how do you how do you start a song from scratch? I guess uh, it's weird that you brought this up. I was kind of thinking about this for uh, just for the sake of answering this question because people ask. I guess like... Songwriting for me is kind of like trying to make sense of life in general. So I'll be like thinking about things. And then while I'm trying to make sense of things, then I'm like coming up with like things surrounding that topic. And then all of a sudden, like a line will pop into my head that could be a lyric. And then I'm like, oh, I could definitely work with that. So like, I guess from like a creative perspective and like building on the fact that you mentioned that my songs are kind of all over the place style wise it's like the mood of what i'm singing about kind of drives the i guess genre that i'm going to push the song towards um so yeah i guess the feel of the lyrics and whatnot kind of end up making the song what it is and i've been writing songs like since i was a teenager and playing in bands and stuff and like Digesting all different types of American music and like I don't like any one genre and I don't like playing in any one genre and I think it's cool for people that follow me to like get a taste of like how diversified my uh, I guess influences are. Who who made you want like would you say you first started as a guitar player or as a vocalist? Oh man, hundred percent guitar player. I. Uh, who made yeah, you want to pick up a guitar when you were younger, when you were a teenager? That's a good question. I I had an uncle who played guitar full time in a, a three piece cover band, like in northern Minnesota, and um, that was obviously an influence because he would always have his guitar with a, um, like family functions and stuff like that. So that was like part of the influence. Um, I mean, I don't know exactly what it was. I mean, my mom's like 
before you do play any instrument, you have to learn piano. So I took two years of piano lessons, and then like that, all that went out the window after I got my guitar because I was like what I wanted to do anyway, you know. So if you if you had to play piano today, you, you wouldn't be know what you're doing or how to do it, or it kind of still is in the back somewhere. No, I mean I can like I could mess around in the key of C like in a pentatonic blues scale, but like beyond that, no. I don't even know really, what that means. That play. sounds like you know how to play piano. I'm just saying. <laughs> the pentatonic <laughs> blue scale. Hell yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So a very little piano, I would say. I, I actually, the thing that I wish that I would have kept up on surrounding all that is like the ability to read sheet music because how I've been writing stuff now is like super inefficient. I basically like for um, all of the songs on the uh, album that came out in October, I write the um, horn parts with the guitar. So, like, I'll put the song, like, the bass line of the song into, like, a studio program or whatever. And then I'll memorize, like, the saxophone part by playing the saxophone part straight through, like, the entire song on the guitar, right? And then I do the same thing on another track for like trombone and another track for the trumpet. And then we're living in the future, you know, which is weird. Like technology is like so advanced now. It's like in my lifetime, it's been insane. But anyway, we pop those tracks into a computer and then like it turns it into sheet music. <laughs> so it's like... It would probably be more handy to, like, know how to write sheet music, but it is kind of crazy, like, what you can do now. This is such a random question to ask, but based on your answer, not your answer, but uh, I just noticed something observation-wise. Did you did you serve in the military? No, I didn't, but people ask that a lot. I don't see very many people put their watch on the inside right here. And I've always been told that's like a army thing. And I noticed that your watch is on the inside right there. That's why I asked that. My uh, my co-host today is uh, is my boy JB. He goes by JB Music 661. JB, what's the question for Alex? So my, my biggest question is uh, when you are doing your videography, uh, what is the most important thing you would say when it comes to, uh, you know, getting the the proper sh shot per scene, w would you say the location would be key, or is it more lighting? Or what what would you think is the most important thing? Well, like, uh, function over form is kind of like a thing in mechanics, you know. Like, and I think that in video production, the same can be said for like content trumps everything else. Like, to be like super simple, like. I put a lot of trust in the camera guys that I'm hiring as far as like composition and things like that. But ultimately, like if you can put a cool thing in a place and like have that uh, be captured and relate to the you know video that you're making. I think that's ultimately like the most important thing. Hell yeah. When you said earlier that you write when you're writing, but you also write the horn parts that's to me like sticks out as just something interesting that like your your thinking process of how you're writing your music also involves like the other sections for band members which i don't hear that answer very often that when you're creating a song you're you're creating it with every other element in mind um that just seems complicated to me. Like, and as, as a solo artist that has multiple people to play your music with you on the studio versions, like how do you go about explaining that beyond sheet music? Like to, cause I can't read sheet music and maybe they're not playing it a certain way. Like, is there, can you elaborate on just a little bit more? Yeah. I mean, that's like, I, we could talk about that for quite a bit. I mean, First and foremost, like what I'm doing is not conventional in the sense that I'm a front man and I hire the guys to back me up in the studio and at shows. Um, so that's like old school to begin with. I think like really early on in my life, I, I worked construction and then I ended up running my own construction company and like by the time, and I was in bands and stuff like all the time too. And by the time I hit like my mid twenties, I was like, 
man, being in bands is like, it is really challenging because everybody's got a different opinion and it's like really hard for everybody to line up on like a thing. So I kind of like took music and then the skills that I had from like running a crew and like smashed them together. And I'm doing like the old school front man thing, uh, which is like very old school. There are people in town here. I live in near Minneapolis and there's a small handful of people that do it that way too. It's just like not the standard anymore. I don't think, you know what I mean? I know what you mean with with the session players for for whatever you need for that particular song, they can just kind of jump in and yep. and and rock it. Hell yeah! Uh, did yeah. you did you bring hot sauce there? Oh man, no! I have some going right behind me. I got like I'm like 15 feet from my kitchen. I could go grab it quick. Before before it's you hilarious. get it, before you get it, uh, there is a, a chat question coming in that I do want to ask because I don't want to miss it. We, if that's okay, if we ask a chat question. Yeah. Uh, Spooky wants to know: Can you explain the inspiration behind the song "Motorcycle"? Oh man, yeah, that's uh, that song was like 33 years in the making, man. I got my first dirt bike when I was six years old, and I've been on two wheels ever since. So it was like freaking. I was like born to write that song. You know what I mean? Like it's a jam. I love it's it. totally a jam. Like, thank you. Yeah, it's like it's super left lane cruiser inspired as far as music style. If, if uh, Spooky is into the like style of the song, it leans pretty heavy on uh, left lane cruiser um, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hell yeah, very cool. Uh, go grab the hot sauce. If we're, we'll switch over for a second and jam. Uh, we did jam time earlier, so I, I'm gonna throw up a motorcycle real quick in video form. While you grab the hot sauce, if you have you had a chance to uh, to think about what movie or TV show is your absolute favorite? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, I will not stump you. Oh, it's like the first thing that I thought of was Captain Ron. Ca wow, <laughs> with Kurt Russell. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I haven't seen that movie in many years. Uh, give me a second Let's to look go. it up. I'll look up some Captain Ron trivia. Did not see that coming. But uh, go grab that. I'm going to jam some motorcycle right now. We're hanging out with Alexander Craig. If you're feeling it, please hit the sub button. Support him any way you can. Follow him on Spotify. And uh, we'll see him in just a second as he grabs the hot sauce. And I'm looking up some Captain Ron trivia. Dang, I haven't heard about that movie in a long time. That's badass. If you haven't seen that movie, it's it's a really funny, uh, like ship sailing kind of movie, but with Kurt Russell. Of course, Alex is automatically on the pole. Looks like a fun video to shoot too. Can you can you just like briefly talk about the experience of how setting this video shoot up, getting all the bikers, getting all the fans there, the fire, like just just explain to me how complicated it was to like do this video shoot. It was crazy because the okay, so first of all, all of the shots of the band um on the trailer behind the uh Chevy car, the old school car, all of that stuff was flash mob stuff so we didn't pull permits for any of that stuff um and then to make it more complicated all of it was planned in two weeks so it was like it was nuts man like i was on i was like reaching out to every single person i could think of that 
was a motorcyclist and like that's why it's like all across the board too there's like guys on dirt bikes and <laughs> mopeds and like chopper harleys <laughs> and stuff. so that, that aspect of it was crazy just because we did it that way and like it's a miracle that we didn't get in trouble i'm like part of the thing is, is like um, in Northeast Minneapolis, there's a thing that happens every year called Art World, and it's like a neighborhood uh, focus on art studios and like doing open galleries and whatnot to like encourage that in the community. And then like bars will like, shut down their parking lots and have bands play and stuff. So when I found out that Art World was coming up and I had a hole in my schedule and I was just finishing up rapping like the songwriting of Motorcycle, I was like, motorcycle flash mob let's do this <laughs> i love it like, yeah! yeah i love it hell yeah uh trista who's in chat asks if you could specifically name what town it was shot in she's she lives in minnesota uh oh yeah so all of the um flash mob stuff was in northeast minneapolis and then everything else was shot in either anoka and then like just a sliver of the shots came from Coon Rapids. Um, and then like all of those shots around the bonfire at the end of the music video, um, those were in my backyard actually. Hell yeah. What what hot sauce did you bring? If you could hold it up one more time. This, my buddy, uh, Roberto, who I've been friends with since like seventh grade, uh, recently gave me this hot sauce. <laughs> Check this out. This is ridiculous it's called oh i've had it ass blaster ass blaster. <laughs> from the from the the it has like a donkey symbol or something kick yeah. a, ass kicking hot sauce if i remember it's it's called ass blaster i don't know if what else it says have an ass kicking day is what it says in the back of the bottle mm-hmm Ass kicking hot sauce brand. Yeah, I've had it before. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let, well, let's see if we can stump you, and I'll let JB ask some questions right after this. But, sir, regarding Captain Ron, in the very beginning of the movie, Captain Ron actually says what his name is. What is his name? I... Repeat one more time. No, I have no idea, man. No idea. Like no, no recollection. I've watched that movie so many times too. Like growing up, I have no recollection of what. The answer <laughs> is my name is Ron, Ron Rico, but most people just call me Captain Ron. Is the answer right there? So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. enjoy the hot sauce. I'm gonna do some hot sauce with you, and uh, I'll we'll, do some too. And JB will as well. And uh, we'll look up some more trivia here in a bit and ask some more questions, but let's let's all party for a second. Hanging out with Alexander Craig, man. Support him. AlexanderCraig.com. When we're when we're not working on music. And and not hanging out with family stuff like that. Do you have any like just fun hobbies or side projects that you do? Uh, I'm huge into like appreciating other people's live music and dancing, and uh, I like um, building stuff. I I built a chopper bobber motorcycle last spring. That was super fun. Not uh, the one in the like video. That car in the music video and the motorcycle that I'm riding are both mine. Um, the car is a 1959 Chevy that I bought when I was 17. So I've owned that car like a long time. So it's, like, it's all both of those things. The motorcycle and the car are like a forever of work in progress type situation. So I, I like that. And then like I grew up working a lot of construction. So I have... Uh, I guess uh, I I love for like fine carpentry, but like even framing and stuff is fun. Like I like doing all that stuff, especially if I'm doing it with friends. You know, how's the hot sauce treating you? It's freaking hot, man. My mouth is like <laughs> more than I can keep down. It's weird. 
<laughs> got him. <laughs> JV, what you got? What you got for Alex? Yo, Alex, um, my curiosity uh, comes from uh, your live performances. Are you planning just to, to perform right now in Minnesota, or is there any um, plans on coming to California? Uh, what What's your plans when it comes to that? Um, it's funny you ask that, because I'm actually going on tour a week from today. Uh, it's Upper Midwest Tour, or I guess like Greater Midwest Tour. I'm basically going to Later get, today? Uh, Wisconsin. No, no, a week from today. Oh, at least today. I was like, damn, this man hustling. He is still hustling regardless. <laughs> no. But I was like, dang, he's going to do this and take off. Later. Okay, next week, week from today. Yep. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hit a handful of shows in Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, uh, Iowa, can, uh, Kansas, um, Nebraska, South Dakota, and then back home. For someone wow. first that's impressive. For for someone that's watching that is is trying to do that themselves. Set up just a little mini like we'll call it a 10-day run, 10 gigs or I don't know, uh, a 13-day run with 10 gigs. How how do you even start something like that? Um I mean, I guess an easy thing to do would be to just like and I've done this too. I should say like a lot of these gigs have been like networking style setup and that seems to work really good as far as like if you can find a band that you like jive with uh style wise or like there's something that you appreciate that band that's in a town that you want to perform in i think that it's a good strategy to reach out to them and um like make a cobell um that's successful in two ways that it will help the band that is from that town that's setting up the town it will help them promote the show because it'll be interesting for their fans because there's a band that's coming on tour to their town that's playing with their like band that they follow. And then it's useful and helpful for the person that's coming through town on tour because then you get to perform for uh, basically like a built-in crowd that's following the band you're co-building with. Um, like when you're starting out like on a, like a, you know, start out level. That's like a real practical way to do it. As far as like how to come across those things, like the other thing is like, it depends on what band, like if you're going to like, I grew up in like a town where there's like a working band, uh, like cover band, I guess, mindset where it's like, you know, you like play a bar gig and end up doing three one hour sets across four hours or whatever. So I kind of have like, melded that into the original music mold that i have so like there's a few gig actually there's like probably half of the gigs on my tour are like three hour shows or two or three hour shows where i play multiple sets and i'm the only band and like a few of those got set up from friends that i knew from like previous tours but then too like you can also just like hover on google maps and like hit live music in the search and then it'll just populate all the places which is like real easy you know what i mean like and then you can just start like reaching out to places or even cold call places if it's like a spot that just does music like three nights a week and it's just like you're planning on traveling with a little pa or whatever like you can it's practical to do that in a sense that like that place is going to have a built-in crowd too because sometimes you'll be on tour and you'll be playing in like a formal music venue and if for whatever reason it wasn't promoted very well or whatever, you can like get stuck with a really poor turnout. So, I mean, it's a, there's so many things, man. Like again, we could like talk about this for like 15, 20 minutes. I feel like, but I, yeah, I, I know guess. you do. Are you going to play something for us in or here in a bit? But really quick, how yes. was it hitting Alaska, which I believe was the fifty of fiftieth state that you had not hit? How was Whoa. Alaska on your trip? And what did it feel like when you landed that, wow, I've done it. I've I've been to every single state and just explored. It was freaking great, man. Uh, yeah, I was walking around like my hometown and I realized like, I don't know, two or three weeks before I booked that 
flight to Alaska that I had been to 49 states and I'm I'm turning 40 in like a month. So I was like, man, I only got one state left. Like I should definitely go to Alaska. So I just like freaking went for it. I literally like I love that set it in between uh gigs that I had and I like took a five day period of time and went to Alaska and man it was awesome landing in Alaska. It was crazy too because the girl that I was sitting next to in the plane she had a book open that was like rock climbing or mountain climbing book or whatever. And I was like, are you going to climb mountains in Alaska? And she's like, yeah, I'm climbing Denali. And I was just like, holy crap. Like out of all the people on the plane that I sat next to, I like sat next to like probably the biggest adventurer in there, you know? That is cool. So I told her, yeah, I told her about, uh, you know, that I was going on my 50th state, like little mini vacation thing. And, it was cool. I felt it was cool to like share that with a stranger. And she was like, that's really cool. I was like, thanks. And it was a great trip. It was like, it was cool too, because it was the first time that I really vacationed by myself. Like I've been on vacations a bunch of times, but it's always been with other people or girlfriends or whatever. And um, I've also been on tour by myself, but I've never been on like leisure time in a different place on my own. So that was cool and a new experience. And, I spent some time in Seward, which was awesome. It's like a little commercial fishing town and hung out uh, with some commercial fishermen and little dive bars there. It was cool. And uh, met some really cool musicians at an open mic in uh, Talkeetna, Alaska, which is actually pretty close to Denali. Did you play um, Did you play while yeah. you were there? I did. So I, Hell yeah. Uh, when I saw the the bar in Telkitna uh, was hosting an open mic that night. I was like, I am definitely doing that. Cause that made for the 48th state that I've performed music in. So the only two Holy that I have shit. left is Georgia and uh, Hawaii. So then I'll have played in all 52. That is amazing. Georgia and Hawaii. Well, do you need us to stall or do anything for you to get set up to to perform for us today? Or are you ready to go? I'm ready. I just got to grab a pick out of my wallet. All uh, right. So, yeah, I tuned up my guitar and everything. I'm, like, decently prepared. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hit mute, and I'm going to let you take it away. If you could explain the the song that you're about to jam, maybe talk about it for a second, then just go right into it. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. Um, I didn't really pick a song. Do you guys have any like uh, recommendations for vibe or uh, something like that? I feel like picking up steam is could be my favorite, but at the same time, yeah. time's the new one. Motorcycle seems to be like the favorite here on on the channel, but it's it, we just kind of just want you to do whatever you want to do, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Uh, yeah, man, I'll do uh, picking up steam if that's your favorite, man. I'm I'm flattered too. Thank you. It's our pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Alexander Craig, right here, picking up steam. <laughs> I'm picking up steam. I'm needing what I don't need. I'm taking what's stoked my fire. I'm chasing my dream. Picking up steam. Making headway for the future. Using knowledge for new meaning. Passion's burning. Turn to blazing as a process. He's my drive. Picking up the Leave what I don't need. They will start my fire. Chasing my dream. Picking up the street. I'm on the edge of something good. I wouldn't trade it if I could. The greatest value that I know is find a piece of thin and gold. I'm picking up steam, leaving what I don't need. Taking what's stores my life, chasing my dreams, picking up steam. Oh. 
all the baggage, all the faces, conversation, born in passing, keep transcending with new meaning. It's time to grow from contemplating. I'm making a dream. Leaving what I don't need. They won't stop my vibe. Chasing my dream. Make it up. I'm on the edge of something good. I wouldn't trade it if I could. The greatest thing that I know is find a piece of thing to go. I'm picking up food. Leaving what I don't need. Taking what stars my vibe. Chasing my dream. Pick it up. Food. Let's go. Give me a hell yeah. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. This is the vibes I'm looking for right there. Hell yeah. Well done, dude. Let's do let's do a couple fun questions and then I'll throw it back to JB. Is there this is just kind of just like a random one. Is there anything you collect and is there anything that scares you? Like a phobia or something like that? Uh so I collect records. That's kind of like obvious. Or I guess like <laughs> cliche in what I'm doing, but I have a lot of records. I'm like looking at them over here. Uh I would guess like somewhere between like 500 to 700 records wow um wow yeah the thing that's crazy is like how inflated record prices have become because like i came into it when i was a teenager like in the early 2000s and uh like nobody cared about records at that period of time so i've got like i've got like zz top records in my record collection that I've got for like $2 at like an actual record store, you know, and they're in like good shape. So it's like, it's just weird. Like seeing that like incline in prices. Um, but I love collecting records. I, uh, I haven't been doing it lately, but I usually like, uh, I'll make coffee in the morning and then I'll listen to like, you know, a couple, uh, different records to start up my day while I'm like messing around and, social networking and managing all that stuff related to my career. It's like part of my morning routine. And I don't know. I just, I like that. I, I have, I'm like a nerd about home stereo equipment too. So I've got like, you know, like I guess mid nineties or whatever power amps and like all of that stuff. I've got like a pretty decent setup for like speakers and whatnot. I got like a little sub, to in my living room this it actually sounds pretty good i haven't got into like the crazy audiophile stuff where like you have uh like tube amp you know to like run your <laughs> your setup which is kind of expensive that's probably why i haven't got into that but um so yeah there's that's for as far as collecting goes that's kind of the only thing i really collect um and then like this is funny but like, I have no problem going 120 miles an hour on a motorcycle, but, like, horses freak me the fuck out, man. So you like, won't, you won't ride a horse? No, I don't like riding on horses. Oh, shit. No. Interesting. I'm actually allergic to horses, which is weird fo- uh, yeah. allergy to have, but I'm allergic to horses. Horses is, like... They're a whole other animal, man. Like, I have, like, complete control of a mechanical thing. You know what I mean? Like, a horse is, like, a whole other thing that has a whole other brain. And, like, I've been on a horse, too, that, like, they'll, like, you try and push them to do what you want them to do, and then they'll start dragging their feet and stuff. And it's just, like, man, this horse is going to fall down this hill, and then I'm going to get my leg broken. <laughs> yeah, be like, careful, man. I don't I don't do the horse thing. You gotta be careful. JB, what you got? With with your music and everything that you've put out, say tomorrow, for some reason, a a, a magic person came out of, out of nowhere and was like, hey, you cannot do music anymore. Hit you with that spell. What would be a lasting impression you would want your music to, to leave? Wow. That's a great question. Um, I guess I'll like my music is, I think just offering my perspective and like, I hope that other people, um, 
like find solace in like what I'm writing about. And um, they might use that for like a roadmap to understanding emotions that they have or like find it relatable to what they have going on or um, like too, like even just fun vibes like motorcycle. There's not much like cycle. I guess there's like a little bit of Taoism like peppered into motorcycle, but that kind of goes along with like, I guess like old school biker culture. Um, but like, I guess what I was going for is like, there's some songs that I've written that are just fun. So you like turn it up, like, you know, dance vibey, like party songs. I don't know. I like, I hope that my music leaves, um, Mark, uh, for the merit of like effort that I put into it and like trying to maintain, um, being genuine and what I'm putting out into the world and, I just hope that it's appreciated, like, you know, down the road, I guess. Good answer. In Captain Thanks. Ron. Where does Captain Ron say he's never been? Martin asks him why they have the guns. Captain Ron says, we're getting into pirate waters. Right before that or after that, he says he's never been to what place? Gosh, that's crazy, man. I can't remember that either. Like, when you say it, it's going to pop right back in my head, but I, I can't place it. The answer is Disney World. <laughs> he's, <laughs> Captain Ron says he's never been to Disney World, so we must do some more hot, hot sauce. There is a, a couple more ch chat questions, if that's okay. Yeah, man. Uh, what was your what was your favorite hot rod you've ever built? Well, uh, I've only ever owned that fifty nine, which is like kind of crazy. Um, so I guess that's that keeps that one pretty simple. Uh, but yeah, that's like since I was seventeen, I'm freaking. I've owned that car for 22 years. So since I've owned the car, it's had three different engines in it four different times. Um, and then like, you know, other stuff too. It's like, that's like a, you know, it's like a rat car, rat rod type car. So like when things break or like whatever, sometimes you have to like cobble stuff together. Um, as far as that goes, like, Growing up too, like I did a lot, like decent amount of wrenching on cars with my dad. Um, he had a, he still has, it's not running right now, but a 69 Chevelle and uh, also a, a 1928 Model A. That's like basically more or less original. Um, so that's pretty cool. My, a cool thing that my grandpa did um, was uh, when he retired, he restored five different Model A Ford vehicles and uh, he had five boys and when he passed away each of the boys inherited a car and the way that they did it is uh, they put numbers into a hat and whoever pulled number one got the first pick and then so on down the line and the weird thing is, is my dad got called last but he ended up with the car that he wanted anyway so it was kind of I don't know what cool. was the car like, he wanted it's a uh, it's the 1928 Ford Model A um, wow. four-door. And, yep, the cool thing about those is uh, they, uh, they're rare. they had a, well, yeah, they, I think, yeah, they're pretty rare. They probably made a lot of them back in the day. I think that car was like 800 bucks when it was made, but it's real simple. It's like a super simple car. It's a little four-cylinder engine radiator um the interesting thing is uh on the steering wheel and this is so bizarre that they put this you can advance or retard the timing on the when the spark is firing within the engine which is like so old school um that's definitely the most interesting thing about that car i think anyway but uh yeah he he kind of modified it up just a teeny bit he changed it from uh six volt to 12 volt just for the sake of it being more practical from electricity standpoint. That is wild. Alex, we've got time for a couple more. Uh, I want to know after the tour, 
is there is there plans for another single another video what can you tell us that you have just mapped out for like the next six months i know sometimes uh artists aren't allowed to tell us exactly certain things because it's like pre-planned and surprises blah 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 what are you allowed to tell us that you have mapped out that we can expect in the next couple months well i have to hit the hot sauce thing because i haven't had a chance to do that yet. i was hoping i didn't um, want to call you out but i was hoping that <laughs> that you would uh remember hey excellent excellent Woo. This is the <laughs> I've never had a hot sauce interview before. Uh, <laughs> so related to what's coming up, um, I've got two songs in the bag that are like we're working on like really minor final uh, mixing things surrounding them. I'm probably actually going to tackle that tomorrow. Um, and then they're going to get uh, mastered and um lizard man is doing the uh, there's an artist in town who goes by the alias lizard man <laughs> my mouth is doing that saliva thing again uh <laughs> he, so uh he's working on so each uh each song that i've released during this spring has its own illustration that was done by him and they've all been done on the same color palette so we use orange like lime green and like sky blue as our color palette and I'm as far as production goes, uh, Lizard Man has two more illustrations to do before I can release those songs. So they're like really close to being done. Uh, so those will come out like in the next month. And then I shot footage uh, for uh, I Go, which is on the full length that I put out last October. We shot footage uh, for that, like I think it was last week or the week before it's crazy man i live in minnesota so like as soon as the weather gets nice here everybody's like let's do all the things all the time so it's like party summer people! here is like <laughs> everyone's ready to party as soon, as soon as the weather clears up well yeah it's like a combination of like getting shit done because it's like nice out and then like outdoor party vibes and like it's just a lot like Every moment of my day between the middle of May and like the middle of September could be occupied with things. It's just a lot going on. So anyway, that's why I kind of lost track of when that was. It's just been super busy lately. So the footage for I Go, I haven't touched that yet. Like I haven't even put it into a video editing timeline. Um, but I hope to release a music video for that like I don't know, like September-ish. Um, and then I also did a Mardi Gras flash mob in my hometown. I live in a little river town north of Minneapolis called Anoka. It's where the Rum River and the Mississippi River uh, hit each other. And um, we did a Mardi Gras flash mob. Uh, the town that I live in has uh, a strip where there's eight bars inside of two blocks. So it's okay. kind of like a destination, like party town for people that like bar hopping. So on Mardi Gras, uh, we did a Mardi Gras flash mob and did like a bar hop and it was not announced. It wasn't, we, I made a private like uh, group chat or whatever on Facebook and coordinated everything on there. But like basically nobody knew about it except for the staff at all these places. <laughs> so it's pretty wild. We I assembled a, Six piece Mardi Gras band, so bass drum, snare drum, uh, um, djembe hand drum, um, saxophone, trombone, trumpet, and then I sang with like a like a punk rock style like bullhorn, you know. Oh. And it was super fun, man. The crazy thing is, is like at, we we started in the basement of like this corner bar. That I know the bar owners really well. I played in that bar like a lot of times so they let us stage the mardi gras band in the basement that's not occupied by like customers or whatever and then on the group chat thing i let everybody know that they should come into mcgillicuddy's and that we would be leaving from there at whatever time and uh so what we did is like 
I bought like three hundred dollars worth of Mardi Gras like masks and beads and like all this crazy stuff. And like all these people that started filtering into McGillicuddy's. McGillicuddy's is like a pretty small bar. It's like probably, gosh, if I had to guess, it's probably like thirty by forty. Like, oh, you know, that's small. Like basically, yeah, it's a pretty small bar. But it was like jam packed. So we fired up the band in the basement and like we had i had like a handful of friends distribute all this mardi gras garb stuff and then people dressed up anyway and like we come up the stairway and like the band's playing and like man when i came up the stairs and went it's mardi gras and we're 1200 miles from new orleans like the whole freaking room just exploded man everybody was so stoked about it did you so, did you stumble uh, to the to the last bar uh actually i'm a sober guy so i did good but some of the people that we were with were like yeah it was that <laughs> for sure all like, uh. so <laughs> so I, the funnier thing that i like so like four bars into the bar hop like the town was busy anyway you know but like every bar that we went to we ended up like collecting people that started following this big flash mob and my buddy uh, Chris serves at like the fourth bar that we went to in the line, and he was like, "Yeah, when you guys like when you guys walked in the door, our bar was already busy. And then by the time the band got into the back of the bar, like I couldn't even do my job. It was like so busy in there. He was like." He's like pretty much threw his hands in the air. I was like, okay, well, I can't do anything for like the next half hour, you know? So that was cool to hear that perspective. And everything went fine. Like every, all the people that like participated had a freaking blast. And bar owners were super stoked because like a bunch of, you know, created a thing, you know, that people got to experience and then talk about. And so I think all the way around, it was a pretty successful deal. So anyway, that was a long winded thing about. I'm going to try and release that like when it starts getting colder up here, probably in like maybe right before uh, Halloween. That would make sense to release it around then. I, I shot, I hired a camera guy to collect all of that Mardi Gras flash mob stuff. So that is awesome. that'll be a little video. JB, final question for, for Mr. Alexander Craig right here. AlexanderCraig.com, by the way, if you're just tuning in, go support him. Go to AlexanderCraig.com to find out more information. So my last question would be, if you could go tour in any country rather than any state, I know you've been to every friggin' state, but with that being said, any country that you would go go perform, be like, yes, I will be there next week if they gave you all the money to do so, which country would it be? Uh, I guess a country that I would like to perform music in. I think Japan would be a trip. But, like, I'm not, like, specific to that either. Like, I'd be cool with, like, any place in Europe, uh, Japan. Like, New Zealand would be rad. Um, probably parts of, like, Africa, South America, whatever. I guess the first, like, the most interesting thing for what I'm doing would be Japan because they have, like, a pretty, um, like, strong appreciation for American roots music. Um so I think that that would be interesting to experience that. And, uh, man, I really want to tour Europe. I just have, excuse me, I'm burping up hot sauce. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no worries. Um, I, I, uh, I haven't um, toured Europe, but I've always wanted to do that. I just haven't got into the right spot where I've, like, connected with the right European booking agency or whatever. Um I do all my own booking in the States. Uh, so it would be a thing where I would have to kind of like find somebody over there that's connected over there to do it. My final question for you, sir, being that you've been in the, uh, the, the industry for quite a while, surely you've made some mistakes in the past. Is there a mistake that you can talk about that you don't want a local band that may be watching that's just starting out to make? Uh, don't burn bridges. I would say that's like a really important one, especially when you're younger, you're like, you're a little bit more fiery and maybe apt 
to do that. Um, I think that that it's like part of the process of like maturing, I think, but if you can avoid doing that, I think that that would be like really beneficial. The other thing that like I learned throughout time as a singer songwriter is, uh, um, singing songs, uh, with I statements that are not sincere songs is expensive in a sense that like if somebody connects with that song and you're singing I and followed by a bunch of bullshit like and you're being creative about like telling the story or whatever somebody is going to connect to that song and then start asking you and digging into like how that came to be and if you're not being genuine about what you're singing about that can be socially expensive because then you're put into a weird spot where you're like, well, I just made all that stuff up. And then for them, it's kind of like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard. So, it's hard to gravitate to it. If they, if they make a connection and then find out that that's not really so accurate. Right. So I being, I learned throughout like a longer period of time in doing this, that it's pretty important to, maintain authenticity if you're singing i statements i would suggest following that with the truth because that's the easiest way to manage it and then two like people are in tune with uh like vocal tone and delivery and stuff like people who are especially like more intuitive type people will can hear authenticity and like how it's being delivered so if you're singing about the truth it's easy to sound authentic because you are being authentic you know what I mean? Like that's the long and the short of it. I think that's fantastic advice. And I've, having done many of these, I'd have never heard anyone use the phrase "I" statement, but it makes a thousand percent the like it makes sense it to does. me. The way that you s explain it, where if if an artist say an "I" blank 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 blank, and then you connect to it, you resonate with it, and then you talk to the artist, and he's like, "Ah, oh, I'm just I'm just talking sh because that sounded good for the for the melody or whatever." Then that's it kind of hurts the artists a little bit, like from a perception perspective. So I, I resonate with what you just said right there. That's that's great advice. Um, dude, what do you got planned the rest of the day? And please, once again, plug anything and everything. I All right, so I'm, I'm going to go out motorcycle riding, hopefully with my buddy Kelly. He reached out to me earlier. Um, he uh, is in... Uh, Lexington right now, which is like, I don't know, 20-ish miles from where I am. So I think I'm going to connect with him. He's a motorcycle enthusiast, buddy. He was actually in the motorcycle music video. Um, he's one of the guys that ended the night at the campfire. Um, so yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna get on my uh, 1984 VF 1100 Honda chopper and <laughs> find my friend Kelly. That's awesome. Shout out to Kelly. Before you leave, Alex, can you do me a favor and just say, hey, I'm Alex Craig or Alexander Craig or however you like to say it. Plug a couple things. You're watching local band Smokeout. Something along the lines of that, but however you'd like to do it. Just a little pro promo yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Alexander Craig. Uh, thank you for supporting local band Smokeout. Uh, check out some music. Uh and my website, uh, alexandercraig.com, making music videos and stuff, and I hope you dig what you see in here. Hell yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Alexander Craig. Go support him at alexandercraig.com. Thank you, sir. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you, brother. Stay safe you. on tour. Congrats on hitting all 50 states. Happy early birthday. This is a lot of fun, man. Thanks for doing the hot sauce. I'm, I'm pleased I was able to stump you twice. But uh, cheers, man. This is fun. Have a great day. Smoke out.